Welcome, everybody, to the fastest rising podcast in pro wrestling. Welcome to the Tuck Your Chin podcast, where tonight we'll be going over AEW Full Gear, which is their recent AEW pay-per-view. Happened a week ago from today at the time of recording. And that was, sure, a pretty good show. Anyways, I am the host for today, Mr. Jason Bailey. And let's bring in Mr. Ronald Van Donald Evan. Hello, everybody. Yeah, we're, we're going to be reviewing uh, the the wrestling pay-per-view that is Full Gear. Um, uh, I, I don't really know what else to say. Just, just sit back and enjoy. And uh, if you don't, then, then, then what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? Imagine how much of a sad, pathetic existence you must live to not enjoy the Tiger Chan podcast. You absolute... Cretan, son of a bitch. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, no, but in all seriousness, yeah, just, you know, we're just vibing, we're chilling, you know, fucking simple as that. Yeah, and we're also jerking off this episode. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Next up, let's bring in Mr. Nick, who's back. Hello, yes, I have returned from my two-week absence, uh... And we are here reviewing Full Gear. Uh, this is my first time reviewing an AEW pay-per-view with uh, oh boy. all of you. So uh, this is where I guess you'll get... Well, technically, I did review Double or Nothing. So this is second time. But but, 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 I, but that was on Crash and Burn. Yeah. So first time on <laughs> Talk Your Chin. On, yeah. Talk shared, Your Chin podcast. Talk Your Chin podcast. <laughs> Sorry for getting that wrong. Shared universes, fellas. All right. Anyways. Let's, what if instead of double or nothing, it was triple or something? <laughs> ah. Anyways, are we ready to jerk off and come here? Yeah. Anyways, while we do that, let's go over full gear. Let's start off with the buy-in match. Um, Serena D defeated Allison K by submission to retain the NWA World Women's Championship. The NWA? The rap group has their own women's championship? That's pretty cool. <laughs> anyways yeah. nick go first man yeah um uh, i i really enjoyed this match um i really enjoying i'm really enjoying the idea of a sort of aw nwa crossover and i think it's going to be good for both um and it really shows in this match um great back and forth it didn't it didn't go for too long and it was everything it needed to be um i've been a uh, pretty big fan of nwa powers so uh i come to know both of these women so this is really good k uh just left nwa so wonder if she's going to uh stay in AEW. maybe who knows uh but i the only negative i'd say is that i liked the nwa women's match more than the AEW women's match on an AEW show hmm. i don't think that's a good sign um, also really interesting to see Thunder Rosa come out. There were a couple of rumors that she was going to go to WWE, I think, but I guess that's not going to happen. Glad she's staying there. So yeah, pretty good match. Uh, I gave it three and a quarter stars. My star system yeah. is returning. Okay. Um, Evan. Um, I didn't watch this match. Um, I actually hear, um, uh, a surprise to nobody. I didn't even watch the show because I don't really watch AEW pay per views. But I, I'm like I I saw the highlights and I know what happens. I just don't really watch. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I yeah I didn't watch this match. And yeah, the AEW women's division is fucking garbage. Needs some goddamn work. Mm. Uh, and and other than that, I don't know what what else to say. It was, it was a match that took place at a wrestling event. I would say this was a match that took place in Jacksonville, Florida, Daly's Place Amphitheater. It just existed. Yeah. That's all. I'm, I mean, I can care less about the women's division in all elite wrestling. Yeah. Um, congratulations to Serena Deep. I kind of just saw it coming. Yeah, yeah. I, I can definitely hmm. understand what you mean. So I, so, so I guess I'm the only one in this call that ordered the show, actually. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give that fucking company a, a cent of my money. Are you kidding me? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I do that all the time. Anyways, mm. fuck the buy-in match. Let's move to the main card, which was Kenny Omega defeating Hangman Adam Page in an AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament Final Match. 
And the winner receives a future AEW World Championship match. Nick. Uh, I I could definitely tell from this match that they they're going to fight again. Like they didn't do everything that they can definitely do in a match between those two. They're definitely setting up for something later. I could tell they were holding back. Still a really good match. It was definitely not what it could have been, I think. But I think that was intentional. Uh, had, they had a really good match, though. Um, once again, a lot of great back and forth. Uh, they're not. They're still like not exactly pulling the trigger on a full Omega heel turn. They're still like saying they're they're on shaky terms in a way, except they're just not a team anymore. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I'm kind of excited that Omega won because uh, it's been kind of a long build for him to get a world title shot. And to see a rematch between him and Moxley is probably going to be pretty good. And I think he's definitely going to take the belt off of him. So I gave that one three and three quarter stars. Okay, um, Evan. Yeah, my uh, description of this match is quick. Fuck Kenny Omega. I fucking hate Kenny Omega. Like you addressed I, on Crash and Burn. Exactly, exactly. Fuck Kenny Omega. I fucking hate Kenny Omega. I'm not surprised that he won. Fuck him. That's all I have to say. <laughs> well, I, know I, mean, a, I, know, I know that's a bit aggressive, but I just fucking hate the guy. So. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> Anyways, um, this match was a pretty dope way to kick off the show. I mean, I'm pretty happy Kenny Omega won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I so I just want Kenny to at least have a chance at the world title and see how his reign goes. Um, um, yeah, I kind of saw this coming. I I thought it'd be cool if him and Adam Page won, but but I'm happy Kenny won. Mm. And, and let's see where this where their rivalry goes with Kenny and Moxley. Mm. I mean, I enjoyed their match at um, full that? gear last yeah, year. Last year's full gear. I mean, that was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Like I definitely, I definitely think that it's probably going to be Omega Moxley at Revolution. Definitely give it a long build and yeah. But 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 as AEW said that their match is happening at on a Dynamite episode. Oh really? Yeah. They're putting yes, it on the, free television. They're putting on the first Dynamite in December. Yeah, so I think it's the dumbest December thing set. I have ever heard. That was my reaction when I saw that too. I was like, "Oh wow. my god, are you?" Kidding? I thought it'll be cool if they would put it on their next pay per view. Why Revolution do they keep doing year. that? That's one of my biggest complaints. Stop, stop putting your biggest world title matches on free television. Stop being WWE. God, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it being free, but still. Yeah, yeah, so do I, but I would like my wrestling to make sense. <laughs> yeah, like, here, here's, here's the way that I understand things. The way that weekly wrestling television should work, it's only done for build-up to increase storylines. Random one-off matches. So, I mean, like, like so wait, Full Gear happened on November 7th. Their next payment is on February 27th. That's a big gap right there. Yeah. You could do something. It doesn't mean an immediate title shot. Why is it always immediate title shot? Have Moxley friggin' beat someone else up. Have him kill Marco Stunt or something for all I care. Just put the freaking match in the main event of Revolution. That is a main event pay-per-view worthy match. That main event hit your first pay-per-view after you started doing the freaking television show. Why exactly. are you doing this on free television? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're the, right about that, Nick. The he, biggest, but, hmm? the oh, biggest rematch. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, Lord. it's kind of dumb. Uh, he, but here's my understanding of things. The way, the ahead, way that I look at it, the way that I look at it, weekly television shows for wrestling, the way that those should go is... Um, the only championship matches that you should have on a weekly television show is mid car titles, and like that's it to be honest. Sure. Exactly. Um, you have you have every now and then just random matches because fuck it, and then the other stuff you do is purely to to build up storylines, and then you don't have world championship matches until you reach your pay per view. Yeah, I would say have have the big matches and the pay per view worthy <laughs> matches on the actual pay per view. Yeah. Yes, I like. And then I, have, then have some random filler matches on the 
on dynamites and yeah. dark. Yeah, exactly. Like I've been, I've like very recently, I've been watching like the very like first Raw episodes back in 1993 or whatever, and that's the exact formula they followed. They almost never had a world championship match. If they did, it was like once every maybe six months they'd have a world title match. Like for example, every- this Monday on Raw, Randy and Drew are having a rematch. Yeah, that's that's to be expected with them. But with AEW, it's getting annoying. <laughs> like with like with. Because I, I remember they had Lance Archer challenge for the world title on October 14th, episode of Dynamite. Yeah, it's like the, the war, AW world title is getting defended more often than the WWE title, but that shouldn't be a thing. Your world championship shouldn't be defended every week, every two weeks. What makes a champion free, and this is a complaint I have as well, because people... A lot of people are, for some reason, getting tired of John Moxley. You know why? Because he shows up every week. You're overexposing him. This is a problem that nobody friggin' understands. Uh, it's like that's why I'm one of the. I'm not sure if I'm one of the few people, but I'm a person that actually prefers a Brock Lesnar sort of reign where he only shows up every few months. That makes him special. That makes the got. That makes his matches so important that he doesn't show up every week. So when you do have a world championship match with him in it, you're going to watch it. It's yeah. It's like a fighting champion doesn't work for a world championship. That's just what I. That's how I feel. A fighting champion doesn't work for that. For an intercontinental champion, for a TNT title, that works. World championship, no. That make that devalues the title. It doesn't make the title feel special to me. Oh. Uh, so next match we had <laughs> Orange Cassidy defeating John Silver from the Dark Order. Oh. Anyways, I'm Evan, you go first on this match. Um, I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Don't get me wrong. I, I you know, I, I really praise Orange Cassidy for his comedic capabilities in wrestling. Comedy in wrestling is very hit or miss. I'm not like Jim Cornette, who just flat out hates comedy wrestling. I, I think I think that when it's done right, comedy wrestling is good, and I think that when comedy wrestling is done bad, it's the worst shit you'll ever see in your fucking life. Um, so with Orange Cassidy, I think that he's legitimately funny. I think he's talented. I think that he does a good job at balancing out being a fucking doofus and then actually wrestling. You know, I, th- I think he does a good job at balancing those things out and stuff. Um, he's got all the f- he's got all the fundamentals to really being a good, enjoyable comedy wrestler. With that said, I think that he's very fucking overhyped and his fan base is annoying as shit. He's good, but he's not that fucking good in my opinion. So, um, uh, like him, yeah, like he won, I guess that's cool and all. I'm not really surprised, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, mm. That's really all I have to say. Like, yeah, he, he's, he's good, but you know, like I said, just really massively overhyped in my opinion. Mm. Um, Nick, you go next. Uh... Yeah, um, I I feel similarly about Orange Cassidy. I don't. Th- he's a good wrestler. Um, I don't think he's the best wrestler ever. Um, but what is kind of pissing me off is the logic they're going with. Like at their last pay per view, he beat Chris Jericho, their first world it, champion, and with a, a roll up. Mayhem match. Right? Was yeah. it with a fucking roll up? No, that, no, no. You're thinking of that, you're thinking that of the was match a later Mayhem on. match. Yeah, where oh, he got okay. thrown into all out. To orange juice slash alcohol. Um, yeah, he just beat your top star, and now he's fighting a guy who's like lost most of his matches. John okay. Silver, Dark Order yeah. guy. Although, although no, no offense to John Silver, that guy is insane. Like for him to be that, not to demean him, small, but to have that in- power is insane. Like that's almost unheard of for me. So yeah, I could definitely see him doing more. Um, the match had, I guess it had some build up with the whole dark order sort of doesn't like orange Cassidy for some reason thing. Um, it was, it was an all right match. You know, it had its moments with like, uh, silver picking him up with one hand doing a military press. That was crazy. Uh, but overall, not really that memorable. The uh, two and three quarter stars. Not the worst match of the night, though. Yeah, this match wasn't bad, it, but it, it wasn't the best match of the night. Um, I I, I kind of saw Orange Cassidy winning. 
um, because it was obvious because John Silver, they're not, they're not doing much with him except having be part of the Dark Order and then do some stuff with the Dark Order stable. I mean, Orange Cassidy is a good wrestler, and I give him credit for the performance he put on this match. Yeah. So, yeah. Otherwise, nothing too special in this. But there is something special in this next match we're about to get to, and that happens to be Darby Allen defeating Cody Rhodes to become the new TNT champion. And then, and now this match was was actually really good. Back and forth action. Darby Allen winning was awesome. Cody Rhodes getting his last name back was was definitely special, and the passing the torch he did at the end of the match, mm. like that had some emotion to it. Mm. And then, and, and Mike Cody was there, the the official. That was mm. cool too. Yeah. Anyways, good match. Darby Allen had a dope entrance with with the car. I thought that was cool. Cool. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> that's my stakes on this match. Um, Nick, you go next. Yeah, um, I, a lot of people were saying it, and I agreed with it. Like this was the match that they needed to pull the trigger on Darby and have him win. Like if they didn't do this now, then there was really no other point that you could really do it. He needed to win this match, and he did, and that was pretty good. Uh, I had some complaints. Uh, one was him winning via roll up. I feel like it would have been definitely more impactful if he'd like straight up beaten Cody, because I don't like just this. It's been a y- more than a year long build up with him losing three times to Cody. Well, technically twice. I mean, the first with the draw, then second one was straight up loss, and then third one was an accidental loss. So I feel like finishing that whole arc with a roll up kind of was eh. I would have preferred. Just like hit another coffin drop or whatever and pin him. Um, I also, while I definitely do enjoy the uh, Team Taz Darby feud, I feel like it kind of. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I enjoy that storyline. It just, I don't, I feel like it felt a little bit out of place to have them attack Darby right after his star making moment. Because like, I think they're trying to make Team Taz the biggest heels in AEW. Yeah, it definitely, I mean, like, probably a little bit under inner circle, but they're definitely trying to make a major heel. I would have preferred them to attack him the next Dynamite. Also, Will, Will Hobbs getting involved. Like, I know they're definitely trying to push him to be a major star, but him just getting involved in all these random storylines and whatever does not make sense to me. Like, that's not how you do it. Hmm. But, like, the guy has talent. I mean, he's still a little green, but he definitely has talent. He can be a star, but uh, just it's been very confusing the way they're booking him. But overall, the match was really good. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed the result. Uh, definitely, it was exactly what it needed to be. Uh, four stars. All right, I'm um, Evan. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, Okay, so I've seen a few matches that have had Darby Allen in them, and he's really another one of those guys where, like, he's not a bad wrestler. I just also don't get the hype, to be honest. Um, I The reason why I can't really get behind him is because it's not really even his fan base. His fan base is fine, but he does a lot of things that just don't fucking make sense to me. Like, I watched his match with Cody from his last year. I don't know what show was that at? Uh, fight fight offense. Offense. yeah. Yes, fight I offense. watched. I watched that match, and like that was the match where I really like observed Darby's ring style because it was like one of the first matches I ever watched that had him in it. And he like whenever he does these weird like rolls and flips for no fucking reason, and it just looks weird. Uh, but anyway, aside from that, he's not a bad wrestler and all of that. Um, so with him winning, I'm not surprised either. And I I think that it's good that they are pushing somebody that isn't, you know, like, like a former WWE guy, you know, because if Mm. I'm not mistaken, is Darby Allen the first motherfucker to win, to be a non ex WWE guy to win a title in AEW? Is he the first Um, one? No, technically, no, I don't think either of the uh, SCU was in WWE. So I think... And also Riho, so no, definitely not the first. True. Yeah, but he's he's definitely like, like he's the first yeah. guy. He's the definitely he's the first non WWE guy to win a singles title. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, 
Yeah, <laughs> AEW, on the off chance that you see this, keep fucking doing that. Keep pushing people who weren't <laughs> in WWE beforehand. Please. Yes. It makes to, fucking sense. Yeah. Um, I, I know sense. that you. I know that you guys don't know how to do things that make sense, but fucking just keep doing it for Christ's sake. Uh, but anyway, yes. nonetheless. I, yes, I praise you, Tony Khan. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Khan, yes. my lord, my lord and savior. Yeah. But yeah. No, nonetheless, um, yeah. All, all I really have to say is, I, I think it's while I'm not the hugest fan of Darby, I think it's good to see him getting some some more. Uh, you know fucking opportunities and stuff and and uh, i'm glad that they finally fucking decided to mm. push somebody who was you know is not a former wv employee yeah that's all i have to say about it also a uh, quick fun fact did you know that darby <laughs> allen velveteen dream once had a match i didn't know that yeah oh, i didn't know that yeah they had a match on Evolve, and it's free on youtube go watch it it's interesting <laughs> thanks for the promotion nick yeah <laughs> you're welcome evolve please hire me i, I need work not, yeah, not although, <laughs> although now that, you know what's funny, like a part of a small part of me is kind of thinking like, don't be too excited that Darby's the TNT champion because knowing Cody, because he's an ego fucking maniac, he's probably gonna book himself to win it again in a couple of months. Yeah. I guarantee oh, fucking to you. Well, actually, oh, oh I I forgot to talk about that. Yeah, that was, I don't, I'm not sure if that was a Cody ego thing or if it was just really awkward timing. But because I mean, they definitely. I'm pretty sure that the five weeks off he took was to film that show, right? If I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah, I think, like, I don't... How do I put it? I, I, I talked about this with my father, and I, I made the point of saying that it, I think it was just a matter of just being very awkward timing. Like, I definitely think that the plan all along was for Cody to drop the title Darby. I don't really think he was going to lose it to, to uh, Brody Lee. I think what they should have done was just had Cody maybe like get injured or something by Brody or whatever, not drop the title, then beat him or whatever, do that whole thing, so that it's not like a flip flop of the belts. And I think then you have Brody beat Darby Allen at some point. Uh, I think it was just it was a really it was just really awkward timing. I think that's what I'm trying to say with this, even yeah. though I've already said it three times before. Mm-mm. All right. Yeah, it, Next match, we had Hikaru Shida defeating Nyla Rose to retain the AEW Women's World Championship. Um, Nick, you go first. Speaking of matches with awkward booking and absolutely no buildup, um, yeah, uh, this was not as good as their last match. And um, Nyla Rose is definitely better than... Uh, Nia Jax, but she definitely is starting to feel like the Nia Jax of AEW. Um, it was, it was, it was okay. Um, I said it before. The, I felt the NWA Women's match was miles better than this. I, and I definitely know that this is Sheeta and Rose have done way better than this. Vicky Guerrero was a, a nice, a nice addition to this. She definitely, it definitely feels like a good fit for Rose to have a manager. Uh, but now it seems like that's probably over for some reason. It's just a lot of weird booking, and f- there's definitely women that deserve the title shot more than Rose did. So it, it was just, eh. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. I didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like it that much. Three stars. <laughs> I mean, this match. Um, the match itself kind of picked up for me. As it went on, like it didn't start out too well for me because, like you know, the weird booking and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but Hikaru Shida winning that was good. I mean, Nyla yeah. Rose, like I can't stand her. Like she can be a good monster heel if she's booked right. It's just I don't know. Yeah, so it, it's just... Tony Khan needs to like fix the AEW Women's Division. That's all. Yeah, they just. Like, I, I'm not gonna complain anymore after that. I don't like. I don't know what they need to do. Like, do more. What they need to do more is more of what they did with the um, the AW Women's Tag Team Cup tournament or whatever. Do more of that. Like, have have like a dark, a separate dark for the women, maybe or something, so you could build storylines, like almost like a two hundred five live type thing where it's separate and you have t- more time to build storylines for the women, and you can add more for that on Dynamite, like. 
an hour and a half is a good amount of time for television, but it's, it doesn't seem like it's enough, or they're just giving too much to the men. Like, there's definitely stuff they can do with the massive women's division that they have. <laughs> like, that's not the problem. Like, the problem is they just don't know how to book it. So, true. There's, there's stuff they can do to fix that. All right, um, Evan, you go next. Nyla Rose fucking sucks. That's all I have to say about it. And that was Evan with his review of Nyla Rose versus Ricardo Sheeta. Yeah. Yes. That's really that's really my only stance. All right, let's fuck it. Let's go to the next match then, which we had the Young Bucks defeating FTR to become the new AEW World Tag Team Champions. Hmm. All right, um, Evan, how about you go first for this match? I'm not fucking surprised at all. The Young Bucks, uh, they, the, I'm, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, what makes me laugh about this is that, you know, FTR, they got screwed over by WWE, so obviously they went to AEW. Um, and fucking, uh, <laughs> they, you know, I'm assuming they went to AEW because they were like, oh yeah, well we'll get, we'll, you know, we'll get better opportunities over there. Uh, they went. They won the AEW titles. Barely had a fucking run with them. AEW tag title, excuse me. And now they just lost them to a very overbooked fucking tag team. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. The Young Bucks are. I've already explained my thoughts on them. I describe the Young Bucks like they're kind of like a Michael Bay film. You know what I mean? Like they, they're, they're mm-hmm. good wrestlers, but they don't know how to tell a story. Um, and yeah, uh, all I have to say other than that is I'm, I'm just not fucking surprised. Pretty stupid. Also. Why the fuck did one of the members of the Revival or whatever do a Springboard 450? I thought their moniker was No Flips, Just Fists. I guess that's out of the fucking window now. This stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fucking dumb, stupid, cringe, fucking retarded. That's all I have to fucking, that's all I have to fucking say. Okay. Um, I must say, um, this match was pretty good. I actually am happy that the Young Bucks won. FTR got pretty boring for me. Because, I mean, they're a pretty boring tag team, um, and they had a boring reign uh, as tag team champions. That's all I have to say. Good match. I'm happy for the Young Bucks. Nick, how about you? Uh, yeah, this is my first Dark Knight FDR on this as well. Um, the long-term hype for this match was pretty high for me. Short-term with the storyline was what the hell. Um, like, there were just a lot of mistakes. I keep saying that with AW. There were a lot of mistakes that were made before we got to this match, which everyone inevitably knew was going to happen. Uh, first of all, I feel like they should have immediately brought FTR in his heels. Like, I don't know why they had that weird face run thing and then just the weird heel turn. It should have been heels right out of the gate. Have totally Blanche to bring them in and they kill everybody. Uh, I enjoyed their tag match with Omega and Paige. That was good. Um, uh, what should what they should have done? Uh, not had this match in the first place. Save it for like I don't know next year. Have a long term build, which nobody does anymore. I don't know why. Um, good point. Yeah, I'm just I'm disappointed in the storytelling. The match was great because it's the Young Bucks and FTR. It's bound to be some sort of great. Uh, I had a mixed reaction to the 450 deal like Evan did. I mean, I kind of I kind of see it in the way that, you know, their moniker is no flips, no, no flips, only fists. And then the one time they try to do a flip, it backfires and they get killed because of it. I'm sort of seeing it as that, but still. Um and Young Bucks winning titles was the worst decision they could have gone with. It definitely should have given FTR a way longer reign than that. They should have been the longest reigning tag champions. I mean, true. They, they should have won it at another time. They should have... <clears throat> and, like, like, the second I heard them say, if we don't win, we're never going to challenge the titles again, I just went, oh, son of a... I, like, first... It's like, now... Now that's bad. That's overused now. That, like, oh yeah, that line. If 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 we don't win, then we're never going to challenge the titles. That's like, kind of stupid to me. That's become their. That's become their version of a rematch clause now. <laughs> that that's just being overused. Yeah, that's yeah. That line's pretty stupid to me. 
Oh, God. Um, so, like, it only worked the one time with Cody. So for them to do it now, it, it does feel egomania. I've, like, I've been, tr- I've been on the side of the Young Bucks for a, a while. Like, I get some of the complaints against them, but I've been, I'm like, I don't really think they're egos. Now with this, yeah, I'm starting to feel like, I'm starting to turn against them a little bit. This was just the worst decision they could have made with this match. Great match. Not a good finish. Definitely not a good decision with who to put over. Uh, it was the best match of the night, but I just felt the worst about it. So, five stars. Five stars, F you. All right. Because I don't curse. I'm still innocent. You can't make me. <laughs> Anyways, um, next match, we have Matt Hardy defeating Sam McVark in the Elite Deletion match. Um, Evan, you go first. All right, so I'm not going to lie to you. I think that this is probably one of the only legitimately fucking good matches of the night. Um, I did watch, like, the entire thing, and, uh, like, Matt Hardy is just fucking great, and it's unfortunate that he left WWE because he was trying to do some cool stuff, and they just wouldn't let him. Uh, But with this, I think that it was great. I think that it was really, really great. I love the fact that fucking Shane Helm showed up. Personally, I'm not a big Gangrel fan, so... I really could give a shit less of when he showed up. That's just that's just me. I never really got the appeal of Gangrel. Like, yeah, he was creepy, uh, but it's not really my thing. I guess. Really, you're not you're um, not a Gangrel fanboy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? But um, nonetheless, uh, yeah, like when Shane Elm showed up, and then he got like pushed into the fucking like a reincarnation, <laughs> and then came out as the Hurricane. I thought that was the coolest shit. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think I think that it was a fucking it was a damn good match. Um, so Matt Hardy won, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah, did. he did. <clears throat> so if that's the case, then is Sammy Guevara gonna get repackaged now and get a new gimmick, perhaps? Probably, because that's how it works, Maybe. isn't it? Maybe because um, you see, at the ending, they they dumped into like a garbage can. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, they didn't throw him into the lake of reincarnation. That was just hurricane the entire time. <laughs> yeah, it was great, but uh. But yeah, yeah, I think that it was really cool. I, there was some cool stuff that happened, and, and yeah, that's all I have to say about it. Yeah. All right, um, Nick, you go next. Yeah. Um, I, per, I, I think it was a good, it was definitely a good, it was a good cinematic match. I don't think it was the best Matt Hardy cinema, cinema, cinematic, cinematic match <laughs> that he's done, but it was still really good. Uh, I, Loved the Gangrel Hurricane cameos. That was that was nice. Um, th- th- there was one spot. Like I don't think it was. I don't think it was. Def- it wasn't outrageous. I don't know if it was meant to be a reference or whatever. But I. It looks like they referenced when Hardy hit his head on the concrete when they. Did you see? Did you see that when? Like they did. I'm not sure if they did a spear thing to a table or whatever they might have and Guevara's head hit the floor or whatever and they had blood or whatever kind of, did you see that yeah was yeah, it, yeah mm-hmm. like I that made me a bit uncomfortable like why the hell would they reference that that was I don't know uh, I would have left that out personally uh, everything else was weird Matt Hardy stuff and I'm all for that um, yeah uh, I gave it I give it three and a half stars also i would love for one day to have a matt hardy versus chris jericho hardy compound match just to see jericho get thrown into the lake of reincarnation constantly and just come out with all of his gimmicks that would be nice Fuck yeah <laughs> yeah yeah anyways, th- anyways this match was actually pretty good like i enjoyed it that's all i'll say i don't got much to say about it otherwise it being a good match i thought it was cool with with the hurricane and and who's the other person? The Gangrel. Yeah, yeah. yeah Making that's... those cameo appearances and yeah. please st- wait, 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 Jason, Jason, listen. I said I'm not really a big fan of Gangrel, but please tell me you know who he is. I, I kind of forgot. <laughs> Gangrel, wow. the Brood, Edge and Christian, the man and... that eliminated Joffrey the Giraffe from that one random rumble in Florida. 
that nobody's ever heard of that only I've heard of, and now I sound like a crazy person on a wrestling podcast? No, 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 listen. <laughs> fucking Gangrel, he was a wrestler for a brief period of time, I guess, but he was the fucking manager of... He, he fucking, like, brought... Uh, Edwin Christian first, like, in the wrestling league. He was their manager, and then he also was the manager of the Hardys, so... Well, technically, well, technically, Edge was there before, because... Yeah, like, he, he was had a singles match. guy. Yeah, he was... He had a match in 1998 where he friggin' broke someone's neck or whatever. That was his debut. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why he became a vampire for some reason. Yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> there was that. MJF defeated Chris Jericho, and since MJF won, he and Wardlow are allowed to join the inner circle. Well, all I want to say is a good match. I'm happy for MJF, and I and I want to see where where this storyline goes of, of how he does in the inner circle, and and what, and what they do with this. Um, Nick, you're next. Uh, really good. Like, like I. I'm really impressed when they're able to figure out a way to do a heel versus heel match because those aren't easy to do. But they really pulled this off really well, and I think that's definitely because MJF and Chris Jericho were the ones in the ring. Uh, both guys had really good chemistry, great match. Uh, I love the double heel finish or whatever with uh, the dynamite diamond ring or whatever uh, being tossed to MJF. Then uh, Jericho got his bat, and then MJF says F you and just lays down, does the Eddie Guerrero spot. <laughs> And then just rolls him up anyway. I that was I popped at that. Anytime there's an Eddie Guerrero reference, I'm all for it. Uh, so, yeah, really good match. I'm excited to see where they go along with this MJF in the inner circle deal. Maybe another title shot along the line. Maybe they do a coup and MJF is the leader and Jericho's doing something else. So, yeah, there's definitely stuff they can do with this. So. Uh, three and three quarter stars, pretty good. All right, um, Evan. Um, I don't know if this is gonna last. I, I have, I have a, I have a feeling that like, I think potentially maybe MJF, uh, he'll. I was gonna say he would turn on Jericho, but then that wouldn't that make him a face, and that wouldn't work because Jericho is a heel. Yeah, yeah Jericho's um, better. I mean, as a heel. I mean, you could do you could do a uh, festival of friendship deal or whatever. I mean, you could definitely do that. Something like that, yeah. Um, I I think that um, I think that the way they're probably gonna go about things is maybe this will be a permanent thing for at least a while or some shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say. Uh, I'm glad that MJF won and stuff, and I think that eventually he'll he's probably gonna win the fucking AEW uh, championship. Oh, that's, that's a given. Like I feel like the order of things are probably gonna go with is probably Omega wins the belt to go off Moxley, maybe have Paige take the belt off Omega, and then maybe MJF beats Paige because you haven't had that match yet. So I'm I'm gonna be true. I'm gonna be honest. Oh. If they have. Kenny beat fucking John for the world title on an episode of Dynamite. I'm gonna laugh so hard because that'd be the stupidest bullshit. Like I'll be fine with <laughs> Omega beating Moxley, but I'm, that's the thing. Free television that pisses me off. Two uh, I, I will laugh so goddamn hard. Yeah, that's better off on a pay per view. Like at least their I mean their next one Revolution. Next <laughs> do a year. do a freaking Thursday in Tallahassee or whatever. Do a, hmm. just a random pay per view out of nowhere. <laughs> Please, I need it on. I need, I want to pay to watch this. Don't make me watch it for free. I don't want your free stuff. Get along. Mm. <laughs> well, anyways, main event time. John Moxley defeated Eddie Kingston in an I Quit match for the world title. Um, Nick, go first. I'm I'm mixed on this because one, I really liked this feud. Kingston and Moxley are like an amazing pairing to put together. But there was, once again, so much that I just either felt, like, eh about or I just thought it was kind of a mistake. Uh, like, one, how come Kingston, who's only debuted in the company, like, five months ago, just all of a sudden gets a world title match? What has he done to deserve this match? Second of all, I, I don't know. Like, just, it feels like it's Eddie Kingston... He is a popular wrestler, I guess, but not, like, popular enough to carry a pay-per-view. Nothing against him. Great guy, great talker. 
Just I hey, don't know. hey, listen, I can I can understand where you're coming from because when he showed up in AEW and everybody was losing their minds, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? So. I know, I oh, know no, I like mean. I knew I knew who he was before that. That's why I, I was really I was excited I for that match, all. and that's why I felt like it was weird for them to put this as the main event of the pay per view because he was kind of an unknown guy. Like, if anything, like I feel like they should have put maybe maybe you put Omega versus Page in the main event or whatever. Put the tournament final in the main event. You know, this felt like sort of a, a just I don't know. Uh, it felt more like a. a upper mid card match <laughs> rather than a main event. I mean storytelling was amazing. That was probably the best part of this. You know, I definitely seen Moxley have more hardcore matches and considering the two guys who were in it, I'd have expected them to kill each other more. But you know. Also the Kingston paid tribute to Mitsuharu Masawa. And if anybody paid tribute to that guy, then they are immediately my favorite person on the planet. Um so yeah, it was it was an okay match. It was an okay hardcore match. I've seen better. I've seen worse. Uh, three and a half stars. Still, what the hell are you doing putting Omega versus Moxley on a freaking free television match? God, God, take away my pain, uh, Evan. Please go. Um, yeah, go ahead, Evan. Listen. I fucking love Moxley. I prefer mm. the Ambrose gimmick, but I, I like I like him no matter what. And I think he's amazing. I think he's easily one of the best wrestlers of the modern era. Mm. Motherfucker needs to lose the goddamn championship, and I'm sick of seeing him with it. He needs to give it to somebody else. And yeah, while true. as while while as I mentioned, I, I I have no idea who Eddie Kingston really is. I I, I you know when he showed Same up in here. AW. When he when he debuted in AEW, like I said, I just, I didn't recognize who he was, uh, but I think he should win. From what I've seen of him, he's a good wrestler and he's an amazing, amazing, amazing talker. So I think that eventually, yeah, he has he good should, mic skills for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think that eventually he should beat, uh, fucking um, somebody uh, Moxley for the title or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Welcome to Tuck Your Chin. Yeah. What, you, what is your opinion on Omega? <laughs> Don't disappoint your father. <laughs> Anyways, this match, I enjoyed it, and then, and and I and I kind of saw Moxie retaining because it's too early for Eddie Kane. Said he just signed with the company recently. Yeah, like he just needs time time before he at least gets a big title match. Yeah, was that the main event, by the way? Yeah, that oh, was the main event. Okay. So now the full gear review is over. Yeah. Now let's do our outros. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the Tucker Chin Podcast, the fastest rising podcast in the pro wrestling, where we reviewed the most recent AEW pay-per-view, AEW Full Gear, which was sure a pretty good show. Um, it had some good matches. It had, it had some bad matches, but still good either way. Um, actually, actually, let, let's give this event on a scale of 1 to 10. Um, Nick, how would you rate it? Uh, well, I have, of course, my star system written out here. I didn't medium it or whatever, but if I were to give it a star rating in total, I'd give it, you know, uh, uh, I'll give it uh, eight, seven and a half stars. Um, Evan. Wait, I didn't know we... Wait, we're going to start doing star ratings? Yeah, well, I, I now that I'm here, this. you are. <laughs> better, start, better start counting your stars, brother. Wait, 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 wait. When, when, did, we, when did we start doing this? When I Just started now. showing up. <laughs> okay, all right. Actually, you know, actually, you know what? I'm, I'm. That's actually a good way of doing things. Um, yeah, I think the, I think that like most AEW shows, uh, and by most I mean all of them. This is just kind of fucking subpar bullshit. A couple good, like only a couple good matches here and there, but mostly just fucking. It's just infested with mediocrity and retarded decisions and fucking just, just stupid, stupid shit. I'd rate it like a. I think anything above five is too fucking complimentary. I would say, like a, like a three out of t- uh, t- whatever. Ten. Many, yeah, like a three out of ten stars. It's just fucking fuck AEW. All my homies hate AEW. It's as simple as that. I mean, for me, I pretty much enjoyed most of the show. Um, so I would just give us like a nine point five out of ten because, I mean, there was one thing I was, pre- I I pretty much did not enjoy. That was the buy-in match. 
I, I yeah. enjoyed the buy-in match. That was actually one of my favorite matches. <laughs> Somehow, I. But I, I, was, I, I enjoyed most of the show. You better have. You, Sorry. You better have, or Tony Khan's gonna come after you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. So, so guys, we're actually gonna start doing, doing like paper ratings as a whole going forward with our with our reviews. I'm, I'm actually over that that that's actually a good decision. God mm. damn it. So yeah, and it just debuted today. Here. I'm taking. I'm, I'm using my creative control, brother. <laughs> and we see. I follow everyone on their socials. Will be linked down below. I'm not gonna say on here. It's gonna be in the description, anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, um, Evan. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Instagram at a uh, Ronald underscore Van underscore Donald. I'm the most active on there. You can subscribe to my YouTube, which is Ronald Van Donald. And you can follow me on Twitter, which is Ronald Van Donald, but I'm not the most active on those two. I upload to YouTube every now and then. Mm. And um, I, I only really just re- I retweet uh, other people's tweets on Twitter, as in, like, YouTubers. Including the podcast accounts. Yeah, and, like, YouTubers and shit that I enjoy and all of that stuff. So uh, that's all there is to it. But, yeah, AEW's trash, daily reminder. And that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. But you have to say, keep jerking off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And subscribe to Crash and Burn the Moshcast and to this channel. Mm. Yeah. Um, Nick, end it off, man. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone who is watching this. Uh, hope you're enjoying life or whatever. Please subscribe to this wonderful tan- channel. Make sure you tuck your chin. Uh, make sure you subscribe to Crash and Burn Wrestling Podcast. Make sure you like- suck your own cock. <laughs> make sure to do that as well. Uh, subscribe to the Moshcast. Subscribe to the uh, wonderful YouTube channel that I'm on, uh, where I host. Yes, uh, yes uh, your podcast. Yeah, my podcast, uh, Scoops Out Loud, where I co-host with bring my us father. On. Ellie. Hmm? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, definitely, we're gonna do that at some point. Uh, where me and my uh, father interview wrestlers, people behind wrestling, or just random strangers we pick up off the street and put in our basement. You know, it could be anybody. <laughs> we have we have plenty of options. We have. You can do anything in this world. Uh, hope oh, yeah. Hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, you know, do whatever you need to do. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Duh. Yes. Don't do cough. That, do that Don't. typical stuff to stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. Don't cough. Mm. That's illegal now. Uh, and, yeah. Duh. Hope you enjoyed. Yes. Don't get COVID, okay, everybody? <laughs> Don't get yeah. COVID, or I will find you, and I will un-COVID you. Make sure you <laughs> test negative. Make sure, yeah. you, make sure you... Yeah, study <laughs> study hard for the COVID test. Study. <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyways, peace, everybody. Take care. The COVID pacer test is a multi-stage. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye. Talk your job!